Ni hao. That's uh, Chinese for hi. Ni hao. I think uh, I hope I got it right. So this is uh, section B for biology 2020, uh, biology 2. Uh, section B where I have to write a lot of things so answer three questions but we'll answer all of them just for the sake of revision so six, six question 6a six explain the stages involved in testing a piece of onion for reducing sugars I had to write so much and it involves essays or essays so it's cumbersome so you have to pause a little bit for you to read through um, my writing you can rewrite it but don't change the meaning so crush sample mix with a bit of water get it get it filtered add hcl to hydrolyze okay therefore what are we testing for reducing sugar so we add hcl to hydrolyze the reducing sugars or double sugars um so that they can be broken to 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 simple sugars therefore you add to hydrolyze the double sugars a heat solution to bo uh, to boiling then allow to cool before adding sodium hydroxide to neutralize the hcl add uh, sodium hydroxide until freezing or phasing stops get the neutralized solution and add equal amounts of benedict solution then heat not heat but heat um you heat the solution okay after you heat observe the color changes if color changes result into brick red or orange then uh, double sugars are present or reducing sugars are present if the color remains blue which is the color of benedict no double sugars are present number b I explained the following nutritional disorders, goiter, koshoka, and leaf chlorosis. Six marks, man. So two for each. I, I tried to go direct to the point, like going direct to the point. So goiter, that is B1, swelling of the thyroid gland caused by lack of iodine in the diet. Therefore, the thyroid gland makes tyroxine, which is a very important uh, growth hormone, especially in children. So swelling would mean you're lacking iodine in your diet because tyroxine needs iodine for it to be made. Kwashoka, uh, poor healing of wounds. Okay, explain the following nutrition disorders. Therefore, kwashoka is the poor healing of wounds, uh, solid limbs, and peeling of skin. Also poor hair growth caused by lack of protein in diet therefore it's a condition caused by lack of protein in diet and these are the symptoms and of course how do you solve goiter by um taking uh, diets which are fortified with iodine then here increase your protein uh lack of protein increase your protein in diet number three leaf chlorosis poor leaf development and general plant growth caused by lack of nitrogen nitrogen in plants is this is absorbed um, in form of nitrates and ammonia ammonia so if a plant lacks nitrogen then it will not be able to make amino acids and other things and uh, therefore leaf fluorosis would result that was my answering right there i move to the next question uh question seven uh describe the process i mean describe the process of reproduction in a frog eight solid marks where are you right there eight solid marks Okay, so I tried as hard as possible to simply just go straight to the point. Um, male mounts female, and together they head for a waterlogged site. Therefore, mounting means getting on top of the female. Males are usually smaller than females, so females can easily carry the males. So the male climbs on the female, and they head for a waterlogged site. Or they may, the climbing may even occur just there in the water. They, frogs clock to impress females, clock. Rock. They, are, they do that to, to communicate during their mating season. The female releases eggs in stagnant water and male sprays semen on them. Okay, there's no penetration there. Therefore, the, the, the semen from the male is just sprayed on the eggs so they, they mix and fuse. Male semen has lipids co uh, which cause... Um, okay, uh, let me read that one. Male semen has lipids cause eggs to stick together okay male semen uh, male semen has lipids which causes eggs to stick together and float that's the importance of the, the lipids the floating is important to prevent uh, uh, the eggs from being eaten by fish and other frogs and also uh, the, the two have to lay eggs in stagnant water because if the water is flowing there'll be a problem because the eggs will actually not stick together easily and they may actually be carried out to far places and end up being eaten so the, the, the next sentence there is the eggs hatch into tadpoles and in about 10 weeks the tadpoles undergo metamorphosis to be to turn into toads which then leave the water 
okay that is how i could have I, I, that's how i managed to try and summarize this this um this reproduction uh, in frogs you can add more there if it's too little for the eight marks but try hard to bring out points don't meander too far uh question 7b um explain how reproduction in frogs differs from that in human beings human beings not being but beings and number b embryo development is outside the female body while in humans it's inside the female's body therefore uh in any in humans it's in vitro okay it's in vitro inside the female while it's in frogs it's outside Okay, so fertilization in frogs is external and humans is internal. So fertilization um, in, in humans is internal because there's penetrative sex in humans and in frogs there's no penetration. Um, parent frogs do not take care of their young. They live after egg laying while human parental care lasts for years. Sometimes uh, it can even last for a lifetime. Humans are complicated, man. So I think those are the points, some of the points I thought of bringing out on that question. You can think of any more. Uh, question eight, describe the components of blood and their functions. 12 solid marks. 12, you cannot fail to, we, can, we can't fail to get even 10 or 11 here, so let's try it out. Uh, question 8 a plasma blood cells and uh, platelets the platelets come uh, on the other side so these are the three major uh, components of blood where you have the the plasma the platelets and the uh, the blood cells so plasma is a liquid part of blood it involves a lot of it dissolves a lot of substances which include nutrients hormones and even waste products plasma is mainly water it delivers vital substances and carries away waste as it baths tissue okay that's plasma for you about 90% water. Uh, blood cells, okay, blood cells. So there are many, many types of blood cells, but generally they're divided into two groups. We've got the white blood cells and um, the red blood cells. Therefore, w, red blood cells, RBCs, white blood cells, WBCs. Red blood cells or RBCs transport gases, both oxygen and uh, carbon dioxide. They are small. They are small disc shaped and they also they are also numerous. RBCs are also if effect, um, effective because they contain hemoglobin. So they are small in size and disc shaped to help them flow properly and so in their delivery of um, of, of, of the gases uh, therefore and, um, and they, they also contain hemoglobin which binds to oxygen and carbon dioxide therefore when hemoglobin binds to oxygen forms an unstable compound known as oxyhemoglobin and when it binds the amino acids of, of hemoglobin bind uh, to carbon dioxide they form also another compound of uh, uh, carbamino something something I can't remember that one but here yeah, they transport gases then white blood cells here blood cells uh, white blood cells are part of the humoral immunity phagocytes engulf pathogens for uh, or foreign and uh, foreign particles let's say foreign particles and digest them while lymphocytes produce antibodies which attack foreign antigens and neutralize them so when you check out these phagocytes are, are made in the white bone marrow and then the lymphocytes are made in the lymph nodes of the lymphatic system okay the lymph nodes of the lymphatic system uh, although in children uh, who don't have um, a bone marrow the liver usually tends to take the the role of making red blood cells and other parts of their bodies tend to you know make these these cells so uh, RBCs are called erythrocytes and WBCs are called leukocytes. Basically, this is what I could write on the cells. And so finally, the platelets, which is the third component of blood, they are also called thromoplasts. Uh, they are involved in blood clotting, which is a mechanism in which a clot or plug forms at an injured site to prevent excessive bleeding and entry of pathogens into the uh, body. Uh, that is our question eight. Question 9. A. Explain the following types of growth with specific references in plants. Types of growth, growth with specific uh, pre, uh, references in plants. Primary growth and secondary growth. 9A, B. Let's go for 9A, B. Um, 9A, I mean A1, A2. A1, 9A1, primary growth. Growth in the roots and shoots of a plant. It results in increase in length and formation of new roots and leaves. Uh, primary growth involves three stages which are division, therefore cell division, elongation, and differentiation. 
Okay, these are references, the shoots and the roots, formation of leaves, those are references. Number two, secondary growth, growth which results in increase in girth, therefore thickness or width um, of the plant. Meristematic tissue involved are the cambiums of the cork and vascular tissue. New vascular and cork tissue results, therefore the, the development of uh, of uh, these this vascular the meristematic tissue or the cambium of the of, of of the of the cork and vascular tissue results into formation of more vascular bundles okay um 9b our question for 9b that is um explain the difference between uh, tropisms and toxic responses in living organisms explain the difference between tropisms and toxic responses in living organisms 9b so our answer here is tropisms are responses to stimuli in plants. They are slow and less complex than responses in animals. Toxic responses occur in animals. They are fast and complex. Tox toxic responses may lead to behavior change in an animal. While as plants don't really have personalities or behaviors, but for toxic responses, yeah, you beat a dog once, the next time it sees you, even if you're putting on another color or you put on a cap, it will just smell you and know you and run for its, you know, for its butt. So question 10, um, explain the following terms, abiotic factors in an ecosystem niche, and then B, describe the key features in an ecosystem in a water body like a lake, a river, or pond. So we'll get to the first one, 10A, explaining the following terms, abiotic factors in an ecosystem. Um, abiotic factors in an ecosystem are the non-living entities in an ecosystem like water, air, rocks, etc. Number two, niche refers to an organism's habitat role and role it plays in an ecosystem. It also includes its tolerance limits. Okay, so those are the that that would be my explanation on these terms. Uh, question B reads: Describe the key features in an ecosystem in a water body like a lake, river, or pond. The key features are that. Um, the key features can be divided into biotic and abiotic. Biotic features would include all living organisms, e.g. fish, plankton, seaweed, mm, not that weed you're thinking about, but seaweed and other sea life uh, in there. Abiotic would include water temperature, water depth, flow, pH, salinity, uh, nutrient levels, etc. That would be my approach on that one. You can add up a little bit more, or not even a little bit, you can add up much on the um, on all that I've written, but this was what I could think of when I was going through this paper, and this marks the end of this paper. I'll see you in the next video. I'll say bye-bye for now. Adios.